And happy Tuesday, the 30th day of January 2024. Welcome to Elijah Streams. I'm your host, Steve Schultz, along with my wife. We co-founded both the Elijah List, which is this portion, the written portion of what all we do, and Elijah Streams. So we are in year 26 of bringing you the voice of the prophets, having a blast doing it, and we're going to have a blast today. Nathan French will be back on with us. Uh, he just functions in really uh, fluid words of knowledge and gift of healing and evangelism, like second to none. And, and so it's going to be really fun to have Nathan on and laugh with him and just have a good time uh, tomorrow uh, morning. It might be a slightly shorter show tomorrow. Clay Clark um, will be on with us. He is, of course, uh, he's got the Thrive Time podcast, but he uh, he is in charge of the reawakening events that are around the country. And they're, I think, in year two of having one just like every month. And so he's he usually gives us the next chapter of a wake-up call and what the enemy is doing. Uh, and so we need that. I, every time I think I'm awake, then I learn about 10 or 20 other things that the enemy has been pulling over. Um, you know, the wool pulled pull over our eyes about uh, what we've been. You've heard the expression that everything we believe is a lie. It's basically my wife and I just keep shaking our heads. We go, another lie, another lie uh, that that we've learned. We were watching a video last night of what uh, the Rockefeller, the, the main guy, how he, he made it um, not illegal, but a great shame if you felt like you would get healed with natural remedies. And he made it his uh, petroleum-based patented medical treatments the the law of the almost the law of the land and he financed the medical schools and so everything were these petroleum-based addicting medical treatments and anyone that started uh, teaching about healthy eating or healthy vitamins that they would shame those doctors uh, into compliance i mean we hear the whole time we thought the medical and science really cared about us and I do believe there are good doctors. Don't get me wrong. There's some really good doctors. But many of them don't realize what was at the foundation of their training. They just didn't know. They were not trained in, in nutritional uh, medicine and all that. So all of that to say when Clay Clark comes on, we're, he, he's going to give us an, a much needed, still needed wake-up call of what, what the enemy is up to. Not so that we can be afraid, but just so that we can stand together and fight against it. Um, and, of course, ultimately the deep state in every possible way so all right but i digress all right let's uh i guess we will, we have a quick brand new spot on the well so here we go with that and there's never enough thanks that we we are so 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 grateful that you're helping us to dig these wells uh so many i think it was 200 and oh, i could never remember the number some between 212 and 220 220 wells every one of them life-changing I mean, literally life-changing, and you did that. You did that, so thank you so much for that. All right, time to bring in Nathan French. So here's Nathan. Nathan, it's good to have you back, my friend. You're up in. Hi, uh, Steve. You're back up in Washington State this time, right? Yes, I'm home. I'm you home. Got your army shirt. Are you? Did you serve in the army, or is that just? No, uh, I'm part. I'm part of the army of God. I just, I just wanted to wear this shirt today, and. I thought, you know what? I'm I'm going to encourage people to get in in the army of God. Yeah, you know, and I, I spent a lot of my time as a Christian trying to avoid uh, warfare. I mean, that was actually my training. We were taught to stay away from it. Don't mess with the devil and he won't mess with you. It was kind of like that. I didn't even want to do anything related to deliverance for I was afraid that he would attack me, which he probably would have, right? But you know, I, I had a prophet tell me, it's like 30 years ago, he goes, Steve, you got the, he says, you got the family of God down cold, but he says, you don't know thing one about warfare. And so he began to uh, give me, a, you know, dip my toe into it. And now I, I can't say that I'm one of those that loves a good fight, but I know that a lot of people do. Do you love a good fight? Well, you know, the best way to fight the fight of faith you just get into humility. You lay your life down, and then God lifts you back up. He said, those who lose their life will find it. Those who find their life will lose it. In effect, we're saying every day, you know, I'm going to pick up my cross. I'm going to deny myself, 
And then I'll be able to follow him. And from that position of humility, then he exalts us. He said, humble yourself and then I will exalt you, exalt yourself, then you will be humbled. So there's something about that posture of recognizing I can do nothing apart from God, yeah. but with God, nothing is impossible. So good, so good. Now you uh, were just in Florida twice. Yeah. Uh, talk about how, whatever you wanted, because you, you were with some of our other Elijah streams prophets, if I can use that term. Lose, lose yeah, sure. No, the, the, I yeah. was there. Um, I was there actually on vacation because we, our church, we, we took off the whole month of January uh, to seek the Lord, praying and fasting. And during that time, we got a lot of words about the, that there's a, a change coming. And, and I, I felt that change. I mean, I pastored for like 12 years, not my prominent gifting or office, but God asked me to do it. We started the church from scratch and my wife and I just wanted to continue to obey the Lord, but we wanted to quit the whole time pretty much throughout those 12 years, really? but God wouldn't let me quit. Steve, he said, keep going, keep stepping, keep believing, keep declaring, keep decreeing. And so, you know, we, we learned how to flow and grow and go and and mobilize and train and equip the body of Christ. And we learn to become effective in the prophetic and operating and healing and miracles and seeing a prophetic culture established. So we learned a lot. And I think a lot of that was so that we could help other leaders, other pastors, apostolic leaders um, to be able to create a culture of revival. So I feel like the whole time he was building us while we were helping to build others. But now there's a shift where I'm no longer going to be pastoring the local okay. church. Um, so we'll be doing revival events and we'll, we'll still do Awaken the Planet events, which is really important for the kingdom. And then we'll do uh, special rock revival events. And uh, and then, of course, you know, we, we are still restoring the school. I was just down there yesterday to check on things and we're putting in a new heating system. Uh, and then we still have the other half of the roof to complete. Uh, but my goodness, it's coming together and we should be able to open up for events uh, down there at the ocean building in Ocean City uh, by Ocean Shores. We should be able to open that up sometime in February. That's really good. And that particular location, I'm not familiar. What's the what's the nearest recognizable big city? Or, or yeah, that would be Ocean Shores, which is the west coast of Washington. Yeah. And anyone who's been to the west coast of Washington, if you've driven through like Aberdeen, uh, Ohoquiam, um, uh, there's Ocean City, Ocean Shores, Seabrook. Um, okay. But anyway, th that area is really in a desperate need for a move of God. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord sent us down there to establish um, a hub for revival where we could um, help to mobilize the local churches. Probably 95 percent of those churches in that area of Washington uh, do not talk about the Holy Spirit. Uh, do not teach hearing God's voice and responding to him, but they teach Bible, 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 which is, you know, it's definitely beneficial. I love the Bible. I read scripture yeah. all the time. But if people don't learn to hear the God of the Bible and start doing what he says, then they, they haven't really entered into the life that the spirit brings. And so um, I tell people, like, if you're going to be Christian, you have to follow Christ because that's what what Christian means. And so you can't follow Christ if you don't hear Christ. And so yeah. that's one of the, I think, primary mandates from God that I have on my life is to train as many people as possible to tune in and hear the voice of God for themselves, um, where you take the written and the and the spoken word, rhema and logos working together. And my goodness, all of a sudden you really come alive. <laughs> so talk about who you hung out with in, in Florida for a few days. I don't know how many oh, days sure. you were there with it. Yeah. Well, Okay. So, you know, it's interesting because I was already in Florida hanging out by the pool, getting some rest and, you know, just kind of seeking the Lord, you know, and um, uh, some friends of ours have a great place there and, and they're, they're just like really kind and gracious. And we were just having a blast, but nice. I felt like the Lord said, uh, you know, pay attention to what I'm going to show you. Somebody invited me. I don't remember if it was Amanda Grace or somebody from her team contacted me and said, hey, you know, they'd really love to meet you. Um, if you're available, um, we'd love to have you come to this event. And I thought, oh, I said, are, you, are they inviting me to speak or just to come visit? Oh, no, they just want to hang out with you. And I said, oh, OK, well, I mean, I'd love to hang out, but I'm scheduled to fly home. And I had a team meeting to yeah. prepare for our, our event in, uh, in February on the 24th, we're doing a big event, you know, revival event. And so I said, Lord, um, do you want me to go? And he says, you would have fun. 
So he didn't command me to go. He didn't say, I need you to go. He just said, you would have fun. And I was like, okay, but I'm supposed to be resting. So anyway, I flew all the way home and I, we did the team meeting and then Manny brother, Manny Johnson calls and he's like, brother Nathan, I think you're supposed (laughs) to come to Florida. And I'm like, okay, glory days, you know? So he's, uh, he's like, yeah, if you want to come, he goes, um, and I said, uh, are you, are you going? He goes, Oh yeah, I'm going, you know? So, so then I'm hearing about it again. And then some friends of mine, I went down, Steve, to um, side note, I went down to Oregon to meet with some business people okay. and I was prophesying into the direction of a company down there and meeting with some people. And a couple of those people that are in land development uh, it suggested that I come to this event also. So I heard it three times. And by the way, somebody's giving me a jet. Did I tell you that? No, no, no. Really? Are you serious? <laughs> remember when I told you, I said, yeah. when I give you an airplane, yes, I do the Lord already that. showed me I had to sew the plane to get a plane. Wow. And now he's giving me a jet. This uh, a businessman, a CEO um, out of Oregon, he said to me, um, Nathan, uh, God wants me to bless you. And, um, you know, I, I would like you to pick a jet that you need for your team. Wow. And then he said, um, and I want to buy that for you. And I said, you want to buy me a jet? He goes, yeah. He goes, I'm going to buy you a jet, but I don't just want to buy you any jet. I want you to tell me what kind of jet you want. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my goodness. Like I wasn't planning to tell this on here, but I am super excited. Not that I need a jet, but God wants to give me a jet. I knew well, he was going to give me a jet. I mean, you didn't go out, you know, and I think that screams loudly here. You weren't going out there trying to no. uh, uh, get in some sort of uh, financial trouble. And the, no. Did, did no. you, you want to tell us which kind of jet, or have you told them which kind yeah, of jet? Yeah, well, okay, so he started telling me about He knew about a few jets that were purchased, and the company only needed one, and it was the bomb. Oh, so oh, bomb uh, which, which Which one? Yeah. Okay. So, um, jets, ever since yeah. I gave that, that plane to you, yeah. I've been studying jets. Cause I knew the Lord said, this is a seed plane. You're going to sow this and I'm going to give you a jet. It, it's easier if you hear God to do what he says, because yeah. you know, something good's going to come of it. So then I, I knew there was a jet that would be coming. Of course, I've gotten a lot of prophetic words and I I've heard the Lord myself and it's not like I need a jet. I'm totally fine. And you know, traveling, normal travel. Sometimes I'll get upgraded to first class, sometimes not. And I'm like 6'5", 310 pounds, and I'm going to lose some weight, but I'm 310 pounds. So so I'm a big guy. I can't like, sometimes it's hard for me to sit in those little seats for like 20 hours sometimes flying around the world. And so I I say to the Lord, Lord, um, if you want me to have a jet, that'd be super cool. Um, But if not, I'm totally fine with it. But this guy says, I want you to pick the kind of jet. Well, I don't know a lot about jets, but I've been learning about how far they can travel on a yeah. on a tank and and yeah. how much fuel costs and how much how maintenance what, what, costs. What size? What size the air? Yeah. The, what the, size? The runway, and, the runway has to be. Yeah. What size landing. runway do you need? Yeah. And all these things. So I've been studying all this for like um, a year, right? And so anyway, this guy says, "Tell me what kind of jet I need to know. How many seats? What kind of fuel capacity you need?" Um, and I'm thinking, I don't need a jet. He's like, tell me what you need. And that's what I'm going to buy for you. And I'm like, um, cause, and he's telling me about the bombardier, the bombarday. Anyway, that, that jet that I looked up, I think it was like 25 million. The one I was looking at. Whoa. And because that's the brand that he said they ordered two, but they only need one. Do you know if it's so, a six thousand or a seventy five hundred? Do you know what the what the model? Oh, uh, Steve, you I'm not know? sure. But if, when I the, when I those are yeah, amazing when I, jets. Yeah, when I when I land on the right one, um, because I've just been looking at them all, yeah. and I don't want to be like, oh, I want this one. It's fifty mil. No, I want <laughs> I want whatever I feel like the Lord's in. You know what I yeah. mean? So it could be twenty five mil. I don't know. But the, what I do know is he's gonna he's gonna buy me a J. He pledged it. He's gonna do it. He's a man of God. He's integrous. He's 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 actually at the verge of a major breakthrough. So I can't talk about too much. But what I can yeah. say is the jet's coming and there's people who prayed for that. There's people who prophesied for that. That's amazing. Uh, and I'm just, I'm excited just because it's kind of a cool deal, right? I didn't expect yeah. it. I mean, I guess I kind of, I had faith for it. You know, I, I knew I heard God that he said he would do it. So I guess I, I did expect it actually, but I wasn't yeah. feeling entitled. There's no entitlement. Uh, there's no sense of, oh, now I've arrived. Nothing like that. No pride in it. 
just yeah. I just love that God is so well, able I mean, to do God, exceedingly I mean, abundantly like above. Your, your history is people offering you things you weren't trying to get, you know, yeah. and, and like that's the heavy amazing. equipment. It's yeah. like that heavy equipment. I just asked God for some equipment so I could do some land development. And I had some free time. I wanted to develop a piece of property. And and I thought that'd be great, raise some funds for the harvest because I'm, yeah. I'm planning to do major crusades. Yeah. And uh, to do major crusades, you need some capital. And of course, you know, we have a lot of supporters. We, we have um, friends and partners uh, around the world. And that's what helps me to be able to do what I can do. Jump on a plane last minute, fly out, preach at the tent. I mean, I preached at that tent. I tag team preached with Amanda Grace and Manny Johnson. And we had a blast just hanging nice. out together and wow. praying for all well, of those it, people. That's the it, tent right, right there. Is, there it is. Okay. Yeah. And, and that was, it, it just filled up was, with people was from this all Timothy over. Timothy Dixon's event? Yeah, yeah. Timothy Dixon, okay. Yeah. Well, he's in there somewhere, I guess. Yeah, and I got, Steve, when I got there, I went to the back room in, over in the church, which is next door, okay. and um, Timothy was in there just strumming his guitar and praising the Lord all by himself, and and I walked in the room, and I was just hanging out with them and uh, singing along and harmonizing a little bit with him singing and uh, really loved to hearing his voice and just learning about yeah. him and, you know, ex-trucker. But anyway, God told me, to pray for his right knee. I said, what's wrong with your right knee? And, and he says, well, I, I, I can't bend it. I said, you can't bend it. And he was actually sitting there strumming his guitar with one leg straight out in front of him. And I just thought that's how he was sitting. No, it's because he couldn't bend the other leg. So wow. then I said, well, let me, um, let me just pray for that. Because I didn't know. That was a word yeah. of knowledge, mm -hmm. right knee. Anyway, I said, let me just pray for that. So he stands up. I pray for his right knee. And, uh, and I didn't think anything of it. So then the next morning, uh, he comes to the tent where he actually asked me to minister the next morning because I wasn't scheduled. I just went by faith because God told me to go. Even though I just came from Florida, God sent me back like two, two days later. I flew all the way back, three plane <laughs> rides, last wow. minute to get to the tent as a non-speaker. I was not a speaker in the lineup. And then he he saw things that were happening as I was just helping with Manny and helping with Amanda and ministering to all the people. Manny and I prayed for a lady with an issue of the fl flow of blood, wow. like the woman in the, in the yeah. Bible where she had an issue with blood flow. And God zapped this lady. And uh, as soon as we were finished praying, like that lady was lit up. And she came back the next day. She said it instantly stopped. And she hasn't had a problem since so she got healed. And then there was like necks and backs and all kinds of things that got healed. Um, Timothy actually called me a couple of days ago. And he goes, when you ministered that next day, I ministered Steve for six hours just by myself because they had all flown out. And My I goodness. stayed behind. And Timothy said, can you preach? Can you minister? I said, yeah, of course. I mean, I'm here. You know, I'm supposed to be rested, but I love this stuff. So, so for six hours, like nobody was leaving the tent. Out everywhere, people getting healed of every kind of thing you can imagine, and uh, you know, I was I was bringing this word, and uh, I remember just thinking, oh my goodness, like the spirit of God is pouring out, and I'm so excited about this. And uh, Timothy calls, he says, Nathan, he goes, have you ever seen anything like it? He said the the amount of miracles, the level of anointing, he said that was like that was the next level, and and I said it was, and he goes, have you seen anything like it? I get well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, but I think that's you what guys Jesus all does. together. When you all came together, because you it all was a all, compounding. All, all, yeah, it was. You know, it was and, a and compounding of, course, of anointing. I know, brought, I know they have a lot of anointing among them all. Yeah, and I also know you bring a lot too. So it was we all were, there. We were supporting each other, and yeah. you know, just not nobody trying to get heard. It was just really, really organic and special. And, you know, I love Manny. He's fun to hang out with. And yeah. Amanda Grace was a blast. She gave me her shofar, Steve. Oh, really? She yeah. Did. She gave me her shofar. She goes, she goes here. She goes, um, God told me to give you my shofar. I, God told me to give her husband my watch and pray for him to be wow. healed of an injury in his yeah. mind. And God, God touched him. He's a great man. And I just started praying for him. And I noticed he was getting, he was getting lit up and I was excited about that. And then he, she's like, God told me to give you my shofar. So I didn't bring my shofar. Like when I went to Israel the last time I, I heard God say, you don't need to bring a shofar. I'll provide. And when no. I got there, I was in a shofar store and, and I was holding this really nice shofar. And I thought, I like this one, Lord. A lady comes up, grabs my, sh 
a lady comes up and grabs my shoulder and she says, I have to buy that for you. And she buys me this shofar. And then um, the cab driver broke the tip of it. And then another guy bought me another shofar. So I go to Israel with no shofar. I end up getting two shofars given to me. And I blew the shofar in the Muslim quarter. And I didn't even know it was the Muslim quarter, which you're not, you shouldn't be doing that. But, but I did that. And it, I felt the spirit of God on it. And I felt he wanted me to blow it to say, hey, you know, pay attention. The voice of yeah, God. A, so that's anyway, amazing. That's amazing. it was well, good. Listen, we got some stuff to go through. I'm, I've got the first yeah. thing on my list. So everything we've done so far was all free and not on our list. So, <laughs> so the first thing on the list that you were going to talk about Trump for a minute and talk about him winning big. Yeah. Well, okay. So when I, when he was there at the white house before he had left, yeah. um, I, I was sent there. It was my birthday. And most of us know the story. Basically um, I asked God for my birthday this year, if I could meet president Trump and Melania. And then it, he asked me to do something, which was go to DC. And then he said, go have breakfast with the downstairs. And then he said, you know, pay attention. And then this guy asked me to join him for breakfast and I didn't want to do it, but I said, yes, because God told me to say yes. So I sat down with the guy. He'd never seen miracles. Um, a word of knowledge I got for a person walked by me, a lady, uh, neck, neck pain, back pain is what I heard God say. I stopped the lady. I said, do you have neck pain, back pain? She's like, how did you know that? Well, Jesus speaks today and he wants to heal you. Come here and I'll pray for you real quick. Nice. It'll just take a minute. She comes over. I pray God heals her neck pain, back pain, totally healed. She goes over to her table and starts telling her little friend group about it. That man knew about my neck pain and my back pain and i walked by him and he said do you have neck pain and back pain and i was shocked and then he prayed and now i'm healed and so then there's this bustle over there at the table and this guy that i'm meeting with he's like a congressman or something like that and he says his name's barry and he goes he goes he goes man he goes nathan uh i've never seen this before i'm baptist he goes is this normal for you and I go, well, you know, it's in the Bible, First Corinthians, there's word of knowledge, word of wisdom, there's miracles, healing, signs, wonders, even though a lot of the churches aren't talking about some of this, it's part of the package, right? So he's like, well, this is amazing. And then now people are lining up at the table, six, seven people lining up <laughs> from her friend group, and they all want prayer because they all got different things wrong, wrong with them. <laughs> and so I started praying for them, and they get healed. And I mean, it was really cool. So then Barry says to me, he says, Nathan, he goes, he goes, you know what? My daughter serves President Trump as an intern. And, you know, she's there. He goes, you know, I think I'm supposed to invite you into the White House. Well, oh. I had asked God to meet President Trump and Melania for my birthday. And it just happened to be that I get an invitation to come in on my birthday. And so I'm in there getting ready to, you know, tour the White House. And I go outside on the lawn where Barron had his little soccer set up there, you know, uh, when he was a young guy. And so, uh, well, you know, he had the, he would play soccer out in the field on the left okay. side of the back wow. of the White House and the, and the big helicopters out there. And Trump comes over. Uh, with Melania and there's news stations out there. And, uh, and, and he, he, he saw that there was a, a small crowd of us behind this thing. And uh, so he comes over to kind of greet us, you know? And uh, so he comes over and he says, Hey, where are you from? Talk to a few of the people in the, in the small crowd and the news stations are filming this. Right. And so um, it, Trump goes, comes over to me and he says, who are you like that? And I said, I'm Nathan French. And he says, where are you from? And I said, Seattle. And he, and he goes, are you getting it handled? Because he recognized <laughs> authority. Really? And then I said, well, yes, we're working on it. He didn't know. We just did a big event in the chop zone that actually created oh, an outpouring right. of the spirit. Yeah. So he fist bumps me in the crowd there. He fist bumps me. And, uh, and I started prophesying. I said, you're going to win big. I said, the Lord says that he's opening up. And so I prophesied over him and Melania was really gracious and sweet. And I mean, the beautiful lady and yeah. just love, you know, you could tell the love of God is in her and, and Trump is, he makes me laugh. I find him to be comical. Yeah. He's a little braggadocious, but he's comical and he's confident. And I feel like yeah. the spirit of God is continuing to pour out yeah. on him. So that we're we're starting to see, you know. Anyway, I'm excited to I see him come back. And God said and he's coming us, back. You told the story before, but I didn't know you had a photo of it. You know, yeah. I, never, I never doubted it for a minute. But in case anybody did, there's the photo showing that, yes, that, yes, that event. So yeah, yeah. Do you was, have the one where I went to his Christmas party? By the way, do you have that I, picture? 
No, I, not that I know of. Okay, yeah, I went to I went to his Christmas party. He invited me to the Christmas party. But anyway, so back to this White House experience. I started prophesying, you're going to win big. And he goes, he goes, I hope you're right. He goes, because you're a big guy. And, and we, we have to fight. He goes, you play football? And I said, no. I said, no. I, you know, and he goes, he goes, he goes, well, I hope you're right. Okay, so I was right that he's going to win big. He yeah. won hugely Absolutely. big. It took a lot of work to try to suppress the, what the actual outcome. And so we know that with the dominion and all this, most of this is now widely known according to what benefits them to bring in the rest of their family members. Yeah. But I mean, we've already had a major invasion through that Southern border of uh, people coming in. And, and now just because of the political stuff that's going on, they're trying to regain some popularity, uh, you know, by letting a little bit happen, um, you know, where there's a little, you're starting to see things pop up on the news there. Uh, but here's the thing, um, you know, you can't undo what's already been done. Millions have entered illegally into our country. There's millions of people who actually mean harm to our yep. nation yes, that have come in. The Mus Muslims, even the, the, the extremists, the ones who want all Christians already within. And it, there's going to be things that take place, but we should be ready to recognize that God said no weapon formed against us will prosper. Uh, and that every high thing that is, sets itself up above the knowledge of God, the will of God uh, will be laid bare, will be exposed. And the Lord will bring a recompense to the people. So there's a transference of wealth in the midst of the chaos that is starting to happen right now. I've been seeing People literally getting instantly blessed, sometimes just after a prophetic word that would normally would take years for the yeah. fulfillment of those prophetic words. And now we're seeing in the same moment that it's spoken, God releases something. And then they come to the next night, like this tent thing. That lady came and she says to me, Nathan, um, you know, you said this and now this happened. And I'm so excited. I didn't expect it to be so soon. And yeah. so, I mean, I keep hearing that, Steve. Well, you know, we for the last 20 some years, we've all had multiple prophetic words. And, and most of us have said many, many times, I didn't expect it to take so long. You know, <laughs> we're, we're, we're coming into a new era. Really, it's like a new era. The rules are different. God speaks and it's done right away. Let there be light. And it was instantly so so yeah good, good stuff we'll talk hey, about the, hey steve ahead. real yeah. let me let me just say let me give a, a quick word uh to yeah. president trump because i yes, i believe he's going to see this show good. so let me just speak a word of encouragement uh mr president we know you're the rightful president we know yeah. you won big we also yep. know that the turbulence um the resistance mm. the court cases all the blasting and defaming that we have seen come against you um, is is evidence that you were chosen of God and that the yeah. enemy is very scared that you're going to get put back in your rightful position. And we know and are confident that you will be placed back in to run yeah. another four years. And it will be absolutely uh, the most healing time for our nation that we've ever seen. The resources will be replenished. God has given you a grace to bring finances. Uh, that God has given you a grace to rebuild uh, infrastructure nice. that's broken down, the wall that's broken down. And like Nehemiah, you will finish the good work that you began. And I also heard the Lord say that he's turning your ears up, the volume of your spiritual ears, and you will hear the Lord like never before. He said that, you know, that, be careful what you say, because as a king, as a ruler, that's very influential, what you speak will manifest, whether it be from life or death. Things like the country's going to hell, uh, that's actually a, a negative pronouncement or a curse over the nation. So we break every curse, every word that was spoken from any of us that spoke words that came from, from life. What we can say is this, we can say this country without God would be going to hell. But yeah. since we have the Savior, this country shall be saved. That's and good. so the Lord's saying that if you'll adjust your speech, you'll start seeing things created without some of the resistance. And the Lord says, I'm giving you the grace and the favor to put things in order. And I'm bringing people who you can trust that, that will not be for sale. The Lord said that many people who you brought on and came close, they were enticed by the dollar. And because they were enticed by the dollar, inside grew a seed of selfish ambition Ooh. where it made it so there's certain people you just can't trust. And I feel like God's saying, I'm bringing around you trusted people 
that have been tried and true in the fire of resistance. And I'm going to give them the ability to, to provide counsel and you will have the right team in place to see this country and this nation come into a season of re restoration. And so I just bless you in the name of Jesus. I ask God's grace and favor to be upon you in your decisions. And I just say, we welcome you back to your rightful seat as president of the United States of America. Nice. Great word. Great, great word, Nathan. Yeah. And I, I say yes and amen to everything you said. Uh, amen. He's always, he's never stopped being my president. As far as I'm concerned, he is right yeah. now. He certainly yeah, is commander absolutely. in chief right now. And uh, you'd have to be almost, there it is. We did have that. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh, that's they, awesome. Okay. Yeah. So that was the Christmas party in Florida. Um, my wife and I went there. Um, there this was a fundraiser for, uh, you know, for, for the schools that suffered and the hurricane victims, those families that had suffered from the hurricane uh, there. And so it was so cool to hang out with them. And uh, President Trump gave us a lot of information, a lot of updates on things that are happening and things that need that we need to uh, be able to pray in. And, um, and Melania, of course, was very kind and gracious and, and didn't say yeah. much, but she was just, well, she was fun, just, to, fun to interact just, with. She's just a class act and she's beautiful and they, they make a yeah. great team. And, you know, it's like, oh man, it's like, you know, the closest thing we had to the days of Camelot, you know, when uh, John F. Kennedy and, and Jackie, that it was kind of, this is kind of like that, you know, it's its own flavor, but I mean, it's great. Yeah. Well, that's so, so that good. Was awesome. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Let me jump okay. To, no, go ahead and ask me a question yeah, there, Steve. Well, on, on the list of that I have, we you wanted to talk about the believers' authority. So let's go to that point and see. Okay. What you want to say okay. I've that. been noticing something uh, that's been happening, at least what I've been seeing, and that is. I've been online and I've been doing lives on my Nathan French Ministries Facebook or on Rumble. I've been doing these things where I'll go live and then the Lord will say, pray for right now, pray for this woman's knee or pray for this man's um, uh, brain. He had a brain injury or whatever. And I'll start recognizing that God is trying to bring healing. And so I'll just flow with that. I'll go with that and I'll start calling stuff out. And then people start responding back, sometimes immediately in the comments, oh my goodness, I just got healed. And so I recognize this, this was increasing. Sometimes yeah. I would just release healing during a post or I'd be at a meeting and not have time to pray for thousands of people. So I'll go and just say, hey, Jesus wants to heal right now. If you need healing right now, this is your moment. And so building an expectation and they just say this, Jesus, by your stripes, I am healed. And you're going to get better and better. And then just like Ezekiel 37, I start prophesying. Can these bones live? Yes, if you will prophesy. Forth tell or foretell uh, to call forth those things that yeah. are not as though they are. To forth tell is, is, is different than to foretell. Uh, foretelling is telling beforehand or before his hand moves. Anyway, I started recognizing that the centurion, that story, when you understand authority, because some authority is granted by God because you've been passing tests. You walked with God. You obeyed God. Every time you obey God, every time you respond to God, it creates a momentum in the realm of the spirit, which is defined a product of a body's mass, linear velocity, the speed or force of motion. When you start to obey God, you get in a cycle of being energized in the obedience and yeah. he said obedience is better than sacrifice, meaning you could do all kinds of good things for God, but be far away from his will. And so the Lord doesn't just want us doing more things, but right. he wants us to enter the rest that comes from that double portion blessing where you can actually effortlessly just begin to flow with him and respond to him and, and ask him questions. So you're thinking on him, accessing the mind of Christ to begin to think like him. And then it's easy to respond as you become one with the father. And uh, Jesus said he only did what he saw, what he, what he heard the father say. So he was watching the father, looking to the father, you know, forgive them father for they know not what they do. You know, father, let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. So there's an example in that, in that scripture where we start to see that. Now, God told me, Nathan, if you speak a thing, it is established. Okay. Well, we know that's the scripture that's for believers, yeah. Yeah. but why is it? Some people will speak a thing and it doesn't seem to actually work. And other people will speak it and it happens. 
And then sometimes you see where people will speak something like, I command that be healed. And maybe somebody gets just a teeny bit better. But somebody else who has authority granted by God will say, in Jesus' name, I command pain, get out. And boom, somebody's pain instantly stops. And then somebody over here, you know, 25 people just got healed from just that that's authority, Steve. Yeah, and so God is. told me some authority is granted as a believer, but some authority is actually reserved for those people who spend time in the secret place who continue to pass tests over time. They've been tried. They've been true. Their heart is motivated in love. Uh, yeah. They're not doing anything from selfish ambition or vain conceit. Uh, their, their goal is to honor God, not to try to build a name for themselves. And so God looks at the heart and he sees where we're at. And as the author and the perfect door, we're not yet perfected. So he brings us through the process of sanctification so we can begin to uh, arise and shine, to, to re be reflectors of his light. And so yeah. as the salt uh, causes thirst and the thirst is the living water, the Holy Spirit, as he speaks into us, his yeah. faith shield is built around us. And when you're full of faith, you become faithful. It, to be full of faith, you have to hear God because faith yeah. comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And that's Jesus. So Jesus, the word by the Holy Spirit is speaking to his people. And every single time you say, yes, God, or here I am, Lord, your servants listening. Now your ears get tuned to the tones of heaven and he imparts faith and faith protects you. And when you're protected, you take risks. And when you take risks, you see reward. And yeah. so authority is a big deal. Jesus marveled. I've not seen faith like this in all the land. And why did he marvel? Because he hadn't seen that before. Here's a guy that understood authority. He said, I, I call them and they come. I send them and they go. Just say the word and my son will be healed. And in that very hour, the Bible says that his son was healed while Jesus marveled that he hadn't seen faith like that in all the land. So that's a word for us today. Not only do we have granted authority, but every single time we pass the test, God gives us a graduation to go to another realm of his glory so that we can get to a point where we can just speak it, not say it and pray it, or not uh, saying and praying or, or praying and spraying, <laughs> but actually knowing when I speak and when I pray and when I say it actually works, it happens. And so some people actually know that when they pray for somebody, and, they're going to get healed. Other the, people are just hoping. That the knowing is like this. There's this combination of obeying, 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 which gives them more and more authority. But the more authority they get, the more confidence they have. Now you got that working for you. You've got the absolute knowledge that God's going to back your act, right? Yes. Not only have yes. you passed the test and you know it, and he knows it, but you have you have absolute confidence that God's going to do what I said because he always does what I proclaim. And that's where the authority meets, you know, you know, I don't know, it's a combination. It seems like to me it's a double whammy. The passing of the test, that you, the authority that you gain, add to the confidence that you have. That's you know, it. Yeah. And it, those that's two it. Are because powers. remember, unbelief is, is a demon and yeah. its job is to prevent faith. And so if you can look at the things that would try to prevent faith and actually operate in what builds faith, which is listening for God. This, Steve, is why it's so important to hear the voice of God and to right. learn from people who do, because a lot of people are learning, um, you know, from people who don't actually hear God. And yeah. it's unfortunate that a lot of the pastors in the world um, that are shepherding flocks uh, would say, you don't hear God outside the Bible. This is why we have the Bible. But I believe that we hear God because of the Bible. But we, if we don't hear the God of the Bible, then we miss the whole point of the Bible. So it's like the Bible is meant to point us to the person. Because if you just get the Bible and you never fall in love with Jesus because he first loved you, you'll just become religious and then you'll end up comparing and, and it leads to judgmentalism and spiritual pride, even manipulation. So people have to become purified in yeah. the close, intimate, personal relationship with Jesus. 
in order to get to where they can start to really reflect the light of his glory. And when you start recognizing the scripture, uh, you know, says that these things I did, you'll do also for I go to the father, but don't go until the power comes from on high. So Jesus is saying, wait until you're filled with my spirit so you can properly represent me. And then miracles, signs and wonders will follow you if you believe. Let me blend these next two together. Um, okay. they're, they're similar. And take one, one of the points is take the mountain and the other one says miracles are increasing. Let's just sort of combine those together. What what, what, what do you want to share on that? Yeah. Well, okay. So we, we we've all talked about seven mountains and the seven mountain mandate, and you know, taking your mountain to me is the Lord saying, you know, really press into him to understand what you were called to do. Some people yeah. are meant to go uh, into the political mountain and they're not political people, but they have pure hearts. And if they're not for sale, God will elevate them and put them in position so that they can help uh, be a part of the solution and not a part of the institution. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and then there's people who are called to the mountain of education. I mean, education system is, 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 is in a terrible state across the nation uh, because of decisions that have been made and compromised things and even bringing idols into the White House was part of that. Uh, um, you know, God loves everybody, but he yeah. hates sin. And when yeah. women became inflamed with lust for one another in the Bible times and men uh, gave up natural relations with women and they began to be inflamed with lust for one another, um, they, they brought in, uh, you know, this defilement that caused Jesus to actually, as the righteous judge, wipe out the whole planet and start over. So we don't have to look very hard to figure out that that wasn't according to God's plan, Sodom and Gomorrah and bringing judgment. Now, Jesus is so gracious and kind and he loves everyone. But there's certain things that he set up, like an institution of marriage, to be between a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. Woo means out of man. But he he wants to restore um, that uh, that purification in the bride to where leaders aren't compromising, but they're recognizing the need to bring truth and to be bold. And so when people say that, well, this is about race. I mean, Jesus isn't seeing race; he sees the heart. And he looks at people. He's not looking at the skin color. There's good and there's bad in all kinds of different people groups. Mm. But you just have to be able to recognize that God's not looking from the outside. He's looking at the heart. He's measuring the heart. And so that's really important to remember. Um, what was your question, Steve? The other well, the part. Other, well, the other one. The other part was miracles are increasing, in, in which we've been talking about. Yes, uh, miracle. Oh, by the way, the mountain. Take your mountain. That's God saying. Pursue my will to yeah. bring impact to the mountain that you were assigned to take. Now, some people are like, man, I got to climb the mountain. I got to get to the top of the mountain. We're not meant to just climb mountains. I, I climbed Mount Rainier before my wedding and my wife was actually really upset with me. It wasn't meant to be. And she just said, that's not okay. And I'm like, oh, whatever. <laughs> but I climbed the mountain. It was hard, man. It was, was like 17 was hours. Was this the day the day before your wedding, or was no? It was like two weeks before. Oh, okay. <laughs> but well, I was know, going hey, up this mountain, I man. Have... I wanted to quit the whole time. Uh, I'm like, oh, I got to uh, do this. I'm like, Lord, help me. I need you. I mean, I'm a big guy, and big people need more oxygen. And so up there, there's not a lot of oxygen. And 17 hours with a backpack and ropes and beaners and ice axe and crampons on our boots. And I mean, wow. I had icicles hanging from my nostrils. I was just <laughs> I, it was sheer willpower, and I believe God helped me to make it to the top. But I think about taking the mountain or climbing the mountain, it's different than what God asked us to do. He said, speak to the mountain and tell it to be thrown into the sea. Again, authority says mountain. I don't know what your mountain is. Maybe it's a financial need. Maybe it's a, a job change. Maybe it's a family a crisis. Whatever your mountain is, learn to speak to the mountain and tell it where to go. Mountain, or remember what David did with Goliath? He didn't go, oh, I'm just a little boy and that I've been taking out rabbits. No, God prepared little boy David, the shepherd boy, the little defender. And, and he's out there. He takes out a lion. He takes out a bear. It's preparation for the giant. And so the, the giant shows up. <laughs> you come at me with a boy. And here's little David. Here's what I'm going to do to you. He resists the armor. That's the carnal mind is enmity against yeah. God. The natural remedy. He, he's like, no, I don't want heavy armor. I don't need that. He goes, all I need. And he goes before the giant as a little boy. And he says, who are you 
That's him coming into agreement with what God says about his identity and what God says about the enemy. And he says, to defy the armies of the living God. Here's what I'm going to do to you. And he says, I will do. And he starts to prophesy what he's going to do. And in faith, the whole atmosphere shifts. And he's swing, swinging his thing and just whoop. Then the stone just And the giant's like I mean, you come at me with a boy. And then he's like, you know, so that's an amazing revelation. So yeah. You can slay giants if you have faith. And that's why we need to listen for God. Hear what he says. Do what he's asking. And we'll live a life so miraculous and so blessed. So good. Now we have on, the, on our list to, um, you've got a financial miracle you're going to show. And then we'll talk about words of knowledge. Right? You, you want to show the financial miracle? video do you want to set that up or do we just run? oh that? yeah go ahead if you want to do that okay so, can... so go ahead and run that emily here we go i love it that's a great story and that that, that just shows that god cares about little things sometimes yeah. people think well i i know that god's doing this and he's giving breakthroughs and there's great things happening but what about me and what about this situation and in it once you understand the ways of god then yeah. you start to understand that he can do the same for you so good, so good. Okay, well, what was on your heart to talk about the words of knowledge? or Well, you, words of knowledge. Point? I wanted to just call out some words of knowledge, yeah, Steve. Yeah. Um, okay, so the Lord is healing many, many things across the nations right now. Um, and many people have been getting healed in their hearts. So I believe that people will get healed from the damage of hope deferred. Um, oftentimes, God brings it up. He wants to restore your heart so you can believe again. So just yeah. put your hand on your heart like this, and you can say, Jesus, fill me fresh. Mm -hmm. To overflowing with your Holy Spirit. Lord, I'm asking that you would mend my heart from the damage that sin has brought or those who sinned against me. God, I, I forgive them mm. and I forgive myself. And yeah. I command your heart now to be healed in the name of Jesus because the heart is a muscle. It, it actually retains and remembers things. And so I just pray for all the hearts. Remember he said in the word, I'll take out the hearts of stone and put in new hearts of flesh. And when your heart has been restored, you start to be able to feel and experience mm. um, and increase in sensitivity, even to the leading of the spirit. Uh, you're gaining a capacity uh, to be more capable of doing what he's asking. Um, because when your heart is new and it's when it's purified uh, by the spirit of the Lord, um, then you have a greater ability to respond in sensitivity to what the spirit of the Lord is saying. So I just bless your hearts. I bless um, your mind, the process of thinking and learning. I pray for renewed minds supernaturally in Jesus' name. Also, um, I'm, I'm seeing a lady. You have cats. I see two cats. Uh, there's a lady, and, and you've been having pain in, in the neck area. And you've been sitting a lot because of work and doing computer work. And the Lord says, I'm, I'm healing um, your neck. I'm healing your neck. I'm healing your spine in Jesus name and to partner with the prophetic. One of the things you can do is you can just say, I receive it and then begin to test your body out as the word of knowledge is mentioned. Somebody else, I saw a right ear. God's opening the right ear. He's healing the ear from damage. Uh, I commend that right ear uh, to be healed in Jesus name. Um, there's a man, you hurt your knee. Um, I saw you in the spirit on a ladder and you hurt your knee. I don't know. You stepped on it wrong and something clicked or snapped or something inside of it. I just command that right knee to be healed in Jesus' name. And anybody else who has a problem with your knees, knees, be whole. Knees, I command you be healed in Jesus' name. You just begin to say, thank you, Lord, for my new knees. Thank you, Lord, by your stripes, I'm healed. And begin to proclaim that with your own mouth and it'll get better and better. Um, also, somebody had a digestive system issue. We've been seeing a lot of people healed of food allergies and digestive issues. So I just command to put your hands on your belly and <laughs> out of your belly will flow rivers of living water, rivers and livers. Yeah. Nice. Anyway, I bless livers too, livers and kidneys. God yeah. is healing livers and kidneys right now. Put your hand on your liver, uh, the area down below and, and the kidneys on the, around the backside there. And in Jesus name, I command livers to be restored and cleansed and kidneys uh, to be healed in the name of Jesus. There was a man, Steve, um, I got called. Uh, somebody needed prayer in an, a, re a retirement center in Gig Harbor where I live. And this man 
was buckled in pain and he couldn't stand. He wow. was just terribly in pain. And they said his, he was going in for a kidney transplant uh, that, that, that morning. So they asked if I would come and pray for him. So I went there right away as the Lord led and, and I prayed for him, a new kidney. I reached my hand up. I received a new kidney and then I released it by faith nice. in Jesus name. The man felt fire. And then after the fire, it heated him up inside. And he's like, whoa, you know, like, and then the pain just goes and disappeared. And because of this, this man didn't have to go and do the surgery. He canceled wow. the surgery because he had no more pain. And do you yeah. know that guy, after the prophetic word came, that he would start a healing ministry in the retirement center? He started a healing ministry oh in the retirement goodness. center. <laughs> and healings and miracles started breaking out for the other people. And so there's something about when you just respond to the will of God and you're willing to just do what he asks, go where he says to go, sit and wait when he tells you it's for your own good, and then you just respond and then boom, so something incredible takes place. So, so good. I got a couple words real quick. Um, there's someone that it's a burn. They got some sort of a burn. It seems like it's on his arm. I'm not sure, but uh, his or her um, and the word new skin, God's healing. And you're going to hear the words. It's like new skin. Uh, that's not supposed to go back the like that skin. with, with a burn. And you're going, when you say, when, when you hear someone say, that looks like new skin, you know, God's doing that thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and the other, the other word God. is, there's someone, uh, and a lot, of, a lot of people suffer from shame, this person or persons that have shame. shame. Such a level is when you replay I, that, even though God forgave you a long time ago, and so did the other parties forgive you a long time ago, you replay that in your head. And when you pray, you play that in your head, your face gets red and you flush. And I even heard the Lord say, that's like a royal flush. For some reason, that term is part of the Lord says, when you're, that's when you're point. having that, that's a sign that a demon's got a hold of you in this area. You're like, Here's your word true. of wisdom. The Lord says, tell it to leave. So just say this, leave in Jesus name. Yeah. And uh, there, there may be one or more that you're going to feel something lift off of you. And, and here's a word of wisdom for this. The reason that thing is hung on so long as you keep replaying the sin and then feeling embarrassed and shame for it. The Lord says, next time you start to replay this, the sin, stop and say, no, we're not going there. We're not going to replay those sins. Everyone's over it, including the Lord. And that's an obedience thing. You've got to stop replaying the fall. So there you go. And this, here's what someone's written. Many viewers are confirming they need healing. In areas being called out and receiving it. Thank you, Julie. So, yeah, yeah. I just pray anybody who has a need for healing right now, yeah. I command your body to be healed, whether it be from the top of your head so, or even feet. I see God's healing your feet, neuropathy canceled, feet pain canceled, foot swelling canceled, uh, somebody's right ankle, a woman, uh, you twisted your ankle. I see like uh, one of those little foam braces on there. I command that ankle to be healed right now in Jesus' name. And Father, we, we declare and decree where two or more are gathered and ask it in your name. We know it shall be done. We believe this and we release the healing of the Lord. Come into the screen. Come into your life. Come into your, your feet. Come into the ankle. In Jesus' name, we release the healing of the Lord to come upon you right now in Jesus' name. And we command all pain to get out. Um, everything that needs to be healed, any sickness, any disease, we break the curse and we declare it canceled by his stripes. You are healed. Just say amen. Hallelujah. And then can I ask you, I'm going to throw one more at you. Um, yeah. You, you just prayed for everything. But before we came on the show, you called out uh, ear ringing. Yeah. People that had ear, ringing in the ears. So I know you've got the faith. But can you expand that to anyone that's got ringing in their ears right now? Yes. Praying? Lord, I thank you that you brought up that there was a couple people on Steve's team that yeah. needed to be healed of that. And he confirmed that that was true. That was a word of knowledge. You reveal it so you can heal it. We know that's yep. how you are. And so you're not bringing up problems you're not going to solve. You bring it up so you can solve it. Yep. And you're just looking for us to agree. And so, Lord, we agree in faith 
right now that if anybody has dull hear, hearing uh, or, or if there's any deaf ears, we command deaf ears to open. That's a great miracle story. You're going to hear about this, Steve, that ears got healed, that deaf ears open. Uh, nice. Some people are pulling out their hearing aids right now as we're doing the show. Nice. I command those ears right now to be whole, to be healed. Uh, God's not just healing deaf ears in Africa. God is healing <laughs> deaf ears all so over good. the world. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I command those ears to be open because Jesus heals. I command those ears to be opened and restored because the miraculous power of God has come upon you this day. And I bless the ears to hear in Jesus' name. Ear blockers, get out of the way. There's an activation and an impartation to be able to hear God's voice like never before. And so Father said, practice makes perfect. In Jesus' name. <laughs> love that. Love that. All right. You've got, before we let you go, you've got a, some books that you want to talk about and a conference coming up. So go. Ahead. we've got some slides on that. So go ahead. Yeah. Here, okay. So that books. book is Rushing the Floodgates of Heaven. That's book number two. Uh, and then the first book is uh, It's Not Meant to Be a Secret. That's uh, book number one. And uh, and then book number three uh, the, the third book is that's it's not meant to be a secret. Unlocking God's voice is so important. Um, I just had a guy call me yesterday that does a TV show. And he said his friend, his good friend, read this book halfway through the book. He, he could hear the Lord's voice very clearly for the first oh. time as a Christian in 30, 40 years. And now he can hear God like really, really clear as a result of reading this book. He said, Nathan, I want to have you on our TV show and I want you to tell the viewers that they need to get these books as a as, as something to put in their toolkit so they can begin to hear God's voice like I have been able to. So I'm, I'm hearing stories like that all the time. That book is a real good book. Um, the, the second book is a continuation, lots of powerful stories uh, in rushing the floodgates of heaven. Um, I know a lot of you have already bought these books. You've gotten, you've read through these books. Uh, you've gone to Amazon. I don't know. You went to the website and you got these books. That's awesome. Um, but we have a whole bunch of you that partnered with the ministry uh, on a monthly basis. And we sent you this whole book series for free. The, the third book was one, that book called One is, is the power of unity. Why does God command a blessing on unity? But it's also a continuation of my personal journal entries about what God's doing in the world, what God's doing in his church, and what's about to come to pass uh, in our world politically. So there's a lot of insight there um, that you would really be blessed by. So I would encourage you, if you haven't already gotten this series, um, just partner with the ministry and get them all for free. Yeah. I mean, I partner with several evangelistic different right kinds of ministries yeah. on on a Nathan monthly basis. French, so Nathan French Ministries, is that where they go? That's where you go. If you want that series, just go to that website, nathanfrenchministries.com. Uh, we will send you that whole book series for free. It's about a thousand pages just for partnering uh, with the ministry. And those of you who are waiting for a personal prophetic word, I've been doing that every day. I get up at three, four, five a.m. and I'm wow. writing out personal prophetic words for people who've signed up as a perk, as a bonus. Thank you. Um, I sign up for different people's ministries on a monthly basis and so into good soil. Personally, we do that from my ministry, um, but it is a blessing. The grace that's on them comes on you. Um, the grace that's on this ministry will obviously be able to, you know, impact you and empower you to be able to go forward. But uh, go sign up if you haven't already and you want to hear God better or you don't hear God at all outside of the Bible and you want to hear him. Uh, you can hear his voice. You have to get the blockers out of the way and that's get the good. activators in. And you will hear the voice of God very clearly. So if you want the series, go get the series. It's on the website. And talk about the conference coming up that you have. I think we got Okay, so on. remember, 24 elders. The Lord spoke to me and said, uh, do, do uh, an event on the 24th. And so we didn't do any meetings for the month of January. We took a break. We fasted and prayed and sought the Lord about direction. Uh, and he told me that that was my final year in the pastorate after 12 years. Now we're going to focus on special events to help equip the body, help build up the local churches. That's our heart and our goal. Uh, so if you want to be a part, this is going to be a powerful gathering, a revival 
revival meeting. So it's a rock revival, Nathan French Ministries gathering. Uh, we rented out the Marriott Hotel conference room in Tacoma, Washington. So people will fly in from all over the world. The, the thing filled up. So we had to get a bigger meeting space, oh. uh, which we're praising God for. But if you want to register for that, it is free, but you do need to register. Just go on the website, Nathan French Ministries. Uh, dot com. You can see it there. Uh, register for that. It's the 24th of February. Mark your calendar. Uh, we have people coming in from all over. I know it's going to be a powerful healing explosion and a heaven invasion. And so if you're somebody who needs a touch from God, plan to come. If you want an impartation, I'll be personally praying and laying hands on everything that moves. It's going to be so good. And so, Steve, uh, I've never been more excited about the season that we're in. I mean, it's, it's very amazing. exciting. I mean, <laughs> it's, I, it's never been more exciting to be alive than I can look back on some of those really sweet times in the past. This is more so. And more people are going to get in on this than ever got in on during the, even the I was at the end of the Jesus movement. And that was very involved with people. This is going to be more so. Is already starting to be. All right. Uh, I guess we'll get out of here. A quick reminder that Clay Clark will be with us tomorrow. He's going to help us with our wake-up call. We need these wake-up calls to find out what, what's going on and how to pray and how to fight it. So thank you very much for that. We will see you tomorrow at 11. Nathan, thank you again. God bless you. Have Love a you, day, Steve. Everybody. Bless Have you, buddy. Bye-bye, guys.